So hello again, STEM students of St. Paul College Pasig. Thank you for inviting me. I feel blessed and privileged. So let me introduce myself again. I am Dr. Romeo Lloyd T. Romero. I am a urologist in the Philippines and I also do YouTube on the side. I talk about careers in medicine and my life as a doctor to try to inspire and encourage future and aspiring doctors like you guys. On my channel, people see what it's like being a doctor from daily life to the most complex surgeries. I am a urologist. As a urologist, I basically deal with anything about the urinary tract and the male reproductive system, the kidneys, ureters, bladder, prostate, and the testis, namely. So I do surgery for genitourinary cancers of the kidney, bladder, prostate, and also do kidney stones, andrology, and I also deal with infertility cases. So in this picture, you're at work, so on your leftmost, that's me doing a TURP or transurethral dissection of the prostate. In the middle, that's an open surgery. And on the right, in the advent of modern medicine, we're already doing endoscopic procedures. So what you see there on your rightmost are stone and at the bottom, that's the prostate. So just an intro for our talk for today. So who here serves? Can I get a raise of hand? Just a halos wala. Okay, I like surfing on weekends before the pandemic. So in surfing, we surf waves, but not all waves. We usually pick what we can ride and the ones that are perfect for us. Like where you are in high school now. So that's our starting point. If you pick a wave that's not right for you, it's either you'll crash or you won't finish if it's too small. And eventually you'll learn how to surf the big waves. But it doesn't end there because until now, I'm still picking the waves that I can surf. So what was my mindset when I was in high school? Like you guys, I wanted to pursue a career that I would enjoy. And at the same time, I wouldn't have a hard time getting a job once I graduate. So being a doctor was the last thing on my mind. Although it was in my genes because of my parents, I was really avoiding it because I didn't want to commit anything with my parents and to myself, but mostly for my parents since this was high school. And I didn't want to get their hopes up because to me, I was still also unsure. So my personal background is I was an athlete and I wanted to become a writer. So my first choice was BS Sports Science. Second is journalism. So the choices doesn't sound so complicated, right? In retrospect. Look at my third choice. This was 2004. So nursing was a thing and in demand globally during that time. And until now, back then we had nursing schools pop up left and right. We had doctors locally literally turning into nurses abroad. Only now that this pandemic exploited and made us realize the lack of medical practitioners in the Philippines. So times have really changed, right? So I ended up going with my first choice, which is BS Sports Science, which to be honest, since I am a doctor now, I just use it for personal purposes. But during that time, it was so uncertain for my part because it was an experimental course back then. Third batch pa lang kami and no graduates for BS Sports Science yet. So the pitch was, we are going to work around athletes for strength and conditioning, and do rehabilitation. It's also a pre-med like any other course. You can do research and academics when you graduate, meaning you can teach. So it pays well and respectable. Is it fun? Check. Is it hireable? I guess so. Check. So as a background, we started with 50 students in our class. 35 of that shifted or flunked. 15 of us graduated. Five of those pursued a sports science-related job and very, very successful and known to the field right now. Five of that also turned out to be doctors, so I was part of that. The other five pursued uh, non-course-related and went to like law school. The other one is a flight attendant traveling the world. So the lesson here is nothing is certain. You won't know what you will do unless you start to do it. Unlike my classmate, for me, this was just a part of a process of something bigger for me. As I've said, that was 2004. That was the advent of nursing schools. 
this time naman, this is 2008, this was the advent of call centers popping up like mushrooms in the Philippines. So if I rode those waves, I wouldn't be having this lecture with you guys right now. So I just want to share this picture because some courses in college offers rotations abroad. In our case, I rotated at the Polytechnic University of Hong Kong. So they have a sports physiology department there. So I rotated there. This is one of our trips. So this is Disneyland, Hong Kong. Which brings me to my med school, UST Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. So this is the UST main building, not the med building. So the College of Science and College of Pharmacy is here at the main building. So hindi kami dito. So how did I decide that I would pursue being a doctor? So I gathered myself while I was in college. I decided if I wanted to do a sports-related job for a long time. My friends did, but I didn't. It was only that time that I considered going to med school. And it felt certain. I was passionate about it. I was excited, which I didn't feel any of that when I was in pre-med, when I was in sports science. So I went all in in USD. So if you feel that way now, that you want to be a doctor, that's great for you. So med school is four years. Some people finish it more than that. But it's okay. You're still finished. You're still a graduate. You're still a doctor. No patient can judge you since you have a diploma. So just to add, since I heard this from Dr. Christine, Ganun din ako, USD or nothing. It's nothing against the other med school. It's just that sometimes we put something na kailangan ganito, kailangan ganito. Binibigyan natin ng, ng meaning na it's a sign na pag natanggap ako sa USC, USC ako. So yun, ganun din ako, USD or none. But of course, there are a lot of good med schools around the country also. So let's talk about my pre-med again, BS Sports Science. So it helped me a lot during med school proper because we have in-depth learning in anatomy and physiology. It was really our strength. Actually, sinasabi nga sa amin, chinichicken daw namin yung anatomy and physio. We fall under the College of Rehabilitation Sciences together with OT or occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech-language pathology. Actually, yung brother ko din, like speech-language pathology. But still, like what Dr. said kanina, just take this with a grain of salt. Why? Because all pre-meds has their own advantage. Like those lab-focused pre-meds like pharma, medtech, their strengths is on microbiology, parasitology, pathology, which personally, I had a hard time in those subjects. Or like nursing, they have their advantage because they are already exposed to the hospital and a lot, lot more. You may also have to take into account that you may have a sudden change of heart. You may realize that you don't want to go into med school. That is your choice and should not be solely based on if you are going to med school. So you should also know yourself and your impulse to change. And really, if you really, really plan on being a doctor, don't stress this because any good med school will prepare you to be a good doctor regardless of your pre-med. Kahit AB pa yan, kahit nga daw music, kahit engineering, since you guys are STEM students. So let me share this. This is the St. Martin de Porres building, also known as the med building. So pag nag-pre-med ka ng mga rehabilitation, dito rin kayo. So me, little adjustment because dito ako nag-pre-med, dito rin ako sa building na nag-med school. So there's a written Latin language that I think it's perfect for aspiring doctors to help you guys understand how it's like to being a doctor. So let me read it to you. Honora medicum opera issues son necessaria dus otem es quibite et moris habet potestate. I think I definitely murdered that pronunciation. So it translates, honor the physician, his works are necessary. However, God is the one who has the power over life and death. Ars longa vita brevis ocasio fugit experimentum periculosum judicium difficile. It translates as the art is long, like med school. Life is short, your opportunity flees. Experiment is dangerous and the judgment is difficult. So this is written by Hippocrates, a Greek physician traditionally known as the father of medicine because in med school, it's a next level experience. You will enjoy it. You will hate it. You will face trials and challenges. And it's as good as it sounds. In the process, you will discover things about yourself that you don't even know you could. And you will love yourself even more because of med school. This is a picture of me while I was doing my internship at UST also. So I added another year. So internship is another year. 
PGI yung tawag namin dyan, or Postgraduate Internship. So you'll take the board exam after you finish your internship. So I also did mine in USD. After passing the boards, what are your options? So you have three options. You can practice as a general physician. You can also do moonlighting if you want to earn money right away. Three, you can do specialization like I did. In my case, urology. So depends on the course, how long. For medical, it's usually three years, meaning you just do consults like family medicine, internal medicine. And for surgical courses, it's usually four to six years. In my case, six years. Me, I took urology because it's a mix of medical and surgical field. So I see patients for surgery. I see patients for consults. With very, very few emergency cases. Kasi ayoko nang ginigising sa gabi. Ayoko nang pumapasok ng gabi. So very few emergency calls. And we are only around 400 in the Philippines. That's why it's so attractive for new doctors. So who here plays golf? Uh, can I get a raise of hand? Okay, wala din. Oh, who here goes to Trinoma or Virtus North? I'm sure meron. So, I took my residency training in a hospital surrounded by an 18-hole golf course beside Trinoma and Virtus North. So, tingin na lang yung ways. So, we cater to the military veterans and their dependents. So, we are proud to serve our living heroes. Yan yung tagline namin. In residency, you will also learn leadership skills. Or if you're already one, you will practice and enhance this during residency. This is a picture of me as a chief resident in the section of urology in veterans. So if you watch dramas like Grey's Anatomy, Scrubs, you know how prestigious but difficult it is to be a chief resident. This was May 2020. We were tasked to do surgeries in the midst of the pandemic. And kaya balut na balut kami dyan. And we were labeled essential workers heroes with VIP lines at the grocery with no hazard pay. So being a doctor also widens your option. What you see on TV, they just do consult. But me personally, I prefer to be a surgeon. So on your leftmost, this is me doing a laparoscopic procedure. So ideally, you just do open laparotomies. Now, in the advent of uh, modern medicine, we are now leaning towards a minimally invasive course. So eventually, hopefully during your time, open surgeries might be an obsolete and a rarely done procedure. So the one in the middle, this is an open surgery. And then the one at the rightmost, this is me training at uh, Vietnam. Uh, this is a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. So as a doctor, you will also be a mentor like your mentors before you. So from the start, they won't let you do a procedure without their guidance. Until eventually, you build trust that you can do it on your own. So don't be scared of these pictures yet if you decide to pursue this part kasi hindi kayo papabayaan na gawin yan on your own. Those other people in the picture are my mentors. So this is me during my residency training and the one where I trained abroad. So I just want to share this to you kasi nasa intro na din kanina and this is something I am proud of. So you can be a researcher also. So sometimes it's a requirement, but me, I just like to do it actually. So on your leftmost, this is when I presented in Greece, the one in the middle in Kyoto, and the one on the rightmost is the one in Seoul. So this is all expense paid. So kung kulang pa yung pitch na yun, sa inyo yun, ewan ko na lang. So when you're a doctor, there are a lot of conventions, locally and internationally. So I feel lucky and blessed to have been invited and to participate in several of them. This is due to some of my publications. So this is why I love doing research. So it can be published, I can present uh, internationally. Minsan di ba ginagawa natin, nag-google tayo ng names natin. So yeah, uh, this is my first international publication at the International Journal of Urology. And I'm telling you now, if I can do it, you can do it too. You just have to be motivated. So I try not to center everything academically. The conventions usually uh, last for about three days. We just add a few days for R&R, the left side and Sanami Island, if you've been there at Seoul. The one on the right, this is my latest travel before the pandemic. This is the Parthenon at Athens, Greece, at the Acropolis of Athens. So who here likes Greek mythology? If you know the god of medicine, see Asclepius. So this is where also Hippocrates worked and probably Plato and Socrates. So if you're into philosophy, 
since your STEM students, since they have dedicated also their lives for science and math. So here I grabbed this picture online at Vector Stocks since it showed a picture of several specialties you can consider. A general surgeon, so I'm sure most of you uh, know someone who had a surgery, but it's a breast. So with a general surgeon, later on, they focus on surgeries on the head and neck, the thorax, breast, the abdomen. Dermatologists, you know, famous dermatologists. You know, neurosurgeons, if you watch Grace Anatomy, yung lead actor doon is a neurosurgeon. Psychiatry, kung feeling nyo inclined kay dyan, you can choose that. Orthopedia, ophthalmology, radiology, so many options as a specialty. So it's not like, ay, magdo-doctor ako. So beyond that, there are so many options. Madami pa. Kung gusto mong maging internist, pulmonologist, cardiologist, there's so many specialties. There's always a room for everybody. Kami 400 lang kami. We welcome more. We patients want female doctors. Just to share, since I am a urologic surgeon, so we specialize on the male reproductive system. So mostly males, but for stone cases for cancer, some women, they prefer women also. So doon kami lacking, kaya mas maganda talaga. It's a balance kasi hindi lahat, syempre, traditional tayo sa Philippines. Hindi kami lahat ganun ka-welcome. So a woman might prefer a female urologist than me. Actually, you can do specialized on urology also. May mga specialization pa. Ang subspecialty yung tawag. So merong female urogyne, merong minimally invasive surgery, pediatrics, or there's so many, so many specialty, may reconstructive surgery. So you get the idea. So going back to what I'm trying to tell you. So what is connection? So this is the art of connecting and the state of being connected. So I was looking for this regardless of any choice. So look for this if you are having difficult choices, of course, something you would want to experience something that you would want to be associated with before it was about something that we see that we want to do for the rest of our lives. But now, it, that's not the case anymore. So luckily for your generation, people now diversify skills, talent, and it is now welcome. So like architects are now on YouTube, doctors now can develop apps, mathematicians are essential in the fight against this pandemic. So like me, I'm on YouTube. I am also a statistician, my own statistician as a researcher. So during my time, Adobe was a highly specialized skill. Now it's a casual thing to learn like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, and mostly these are due to apps. So take advantage of this. So I just want to go back with my choices. So looking back, it should be the other way around. So I didn't think that I'd be in a hospital-based setting like nursing. Nobody thought that I'd be an author or a public speaker. So my choices were upside down, but I ended up on what's right for me. So point is, don't worry about it too much. So you just have to trust yourself. Put God above all. And everything should fall into place. So just a thought process. Now, probably you really don't know what to do or you are unsure at most. So let this be your guide. Is this what you see yourself doing in the future? In a certain way, does it feel like a good decision? So me personally, I felt passionate about it because I wanted to help other people. Money comes second, of course. So find your passion. So many possibilities. So don't get stuck and also trust and enjoy the process. So without my pre-med experience, I wouldn't realize the things that I love doing now. Thank you. That's my last slide.